were you ever told directly like you seem a little too emotional on this topic I've, I've often been told that <laughs> but it hasn't stopped me from being uh, passionate Even Vanity Fair, particularly two or three years in when I'd really turned the magazine around and made it into a commercial success, I used to get very vexed because the business side of the operation uh, really kept me out of the discussions of the business strategy. And it was a kind of, uh, don't bother your little head about this, uh, we're doing the big boy stuff. And frankly, um, there's no one who knows more about what a business strategy of a magazine really should be than the editor-in-chief who's turned it around. You know, at a certain point, I, they were talking about global expansion and I was never sort of really involved in the discussion. And I said, why don't we take the existing editorial of Vanity Fair and launch it in the UK where I'm very well known and simply change the advertising and just tweak a little bit in the cover lines to make it better for the market. And you're gonna have a whole new magazine without any overhead. And uh, actually they did. And it became an enormous success and it, it, it still is a great success and part of the revenue uh, success of Vanity Fair. So that was a, a nice moment, but then, you know, it went right on after that where I wasn't consulted about launching it in Europe and in fact it, it, it didn't work because they put in uh, the wrong editor and the wrong publisher and it didn't work. But, you know, I guess I was lucky that they listened to me on that, but I came to feel that it was a battle I had to keep winning every time. Well, I started the Women in the World Summit in 2009 to give a platform uh, to extraordinary sort of unsung hero women all over the world who really didn't have a place to tell their stories. And what blew me away about these women uh, was that they'd overcome so much and yet they were so resilient, they were so good humored, they were so uh, uh, kind of undeterred. This is kind of fun just to see everybody um Everybody working. Yeah. Hi, we're just uh, on camera here. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a hub, right? This is the hub of women in the world. Dean. Uh, Helen Mirren. Um, Dion Furstenberg. Um, Hillary Clinton. Post uh, this last election, women have been motivated. There's been something of a gender quake, something of a uh, an Arab Spring for women, if you like, in which women have suddenly thought, wait a minute, you know, we really could lose our rights here. We could really wind up, you know, without any health care for women who, you know, uh, hard-pressed women who have no other kind of health care could actually end up with no clinic in which they can have prenatal care, antenatal care, you know, uh, mammograms, all the things, for instance, that Planned Parenthood supplies. Suddenly women aren't saying, well, am I qualified to really run for the local, uh, you know, uh, state legislator? They're thinking, I have to get in there and run because if I don't, you know, someone else is going to get into that job who once again, you know, starts chipping away at my rights, my freedoms, my life, you know. It's exciting actually. I mean, I do see us in the middle of a, uh, a huge second or maybe it's the third wave at this point, a huge third wave if you like of feminism. It's a great awakening. <laughs>